growing any business is about momentum. And when you know this, it makes it easier to pull the right lever so that you can gain momentum and keep growing. And the amount of revenue that you make and the amount of widgets that you sell and the number of people that you reach with your message. But what holds us back from maintaining consistent momentum, I mean rapid, steady, almost predictable growth, is knowing exactly what to focus on. Business is all about momentum. Let me explain what I mean by that. When we're starting a business, there will always be some people who keep moving forward, and then there's always going to be some people who freeze. Now, to keep your company growing, you can't work with people who freeze, meaning when we employ somebody, we don't know if they're going to be a mover and a shaker or if they're going to freeze when their department starts growing rapidly in a couple of months. Now, when I go into a company, whether it's as a partner or as an owner or as an investor, we start putting systems in place and we start moving people into the right directions, and companies grow rapidly when we do that, and some employees and even some partners freeze or they self-sabotage themselves. And when that happens, your job as the owner is to cut those ties. Bad partnerships need to be stopped before they become an anchor in your growth. And when an employee doesn't work out, they've got to find someplace else where they're going to be happier. And sometimes that means firing them so that they could become, you know, better at someplace else. Otherwise, they will become a virus that infects the rest of your team. But let's take that to the next step because even your best team members, the, I mean the A players in your company, the leadership team, and maybe even you can mess up the momentum in your business sometimes. Let me give you an example of that. When a big target is hit, what's the very first thing that most team members want to do? They want to celebrate or they want to be rewarded with time off. But when momentum begins, it is not the time to celebrate and sit on your laurels. When momentum begins, that's the time to buckle down and keep moving forward. Think of momentum kind of like the gasoline being thrown on a fire. We need to keep that momentum going. We need to keep fueling that fire. And when we do, it keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. Most companies, no matter what size, slow down and they relax when the momentum begins. And that's why growth only comes in spurts for them. They grow and then they celebrate. And while they're celebrating, somebody else overtakes them. And now they need a new growth spurt. And if they're really good at what they do, they're gonna find one, right? That's not unheard of and they'll grow again. But after they feel comfortable, they're gonna celebrate and they're gonna lose that head start again. Right off the top of my head, man, I can think of three giant companies that went bankrupt because of this. And it's not the size of the company because all companies are run by individuals. And it's the individuals in the company then we need to keep moving forward. And as we find people who can't keep moving forward during times of momentum, immediately we need to know who cannot move forward with us so that we can get them off our team so that we can keep moving to the next level. Let me give you the guidelines behind all this. Every time you get momentum in business or any success at all, you need to focus on sales and then systems and then people and then profits in that order. Every growth spurt of sales must be backed at least by basic systems, meaning that we grow and then as we're growing, grow, 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 we build systems inside of our company to support that growth so that we can keep growing. And the systems are kind of like pillars that support our past growth and make us organized enough to handle more growth. And once a system is put into place, it's handed off to a person on our team or department in our organization who takes ownership of that system. I, I did a video detailing capacity versus capabilities. And if you haven't seen that, you should totally watch that because I share with you one of the easiest rules of growth, which is how to balance your capacity. I mean, the amount of sales you have and your capabilities, which is your team and your systems and your technologies. In short, your capabilities are your ability to effectively handle the sales and then support your growth. The fact is that most companies or most people inside of companies hit plateaus because after every single win, instead of building systems that support their new growth, they take a break because the product or the brand or whatever it is, is taking off and they think they deserve a break because they work so hard. But growing anything in life, especially a business, is all about momentum. You've, that's got to be a mantra for you. And when you understand that momentum is not the end goal, it's actually the starting point. It's a time to buckle down and to focus and to push even harder. When you do that, the real growth, the consistent ongoing growth, and the fun really begins. And you might fight me on this, and that's totally okay. I mean, you might think, heck, my team worked their asses off. They deserve a break so they could come back and work even more engaged. I get it, that's fair. You could think that way. I'm a firm believer in rewarding my teams and myself when we hit big targets, but leaders, 
always want more growth. And when you allow people to keep winning because they keep growing, then what you're going to find is that your people are far more driven, both now and in the future, and they keep coming up with new ways to grow. So we always need you to look for ways to reward your team and yourself in ways that drive more growth and to keep momentum in hyperdrive. I'll give you a couple of examples. Last year, we had a tailor come into our office and make custom shirts for everybody. That was something cool, right? That's something that most of them don't do or can't do for themselves. But it's a big reward, and they loved it, and they felt more confident wearing those shirts. And that confidence definitely had a positive impact on our numbers. And then two years ago, we rewarded people with stand-up desks and ergonomic chairs and, 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 a, and a custom designed office space, which everybody loved because they each got to personalize their space and it made every one of them more healthy and more productive in their work. Now, nobody needed extra vacation time or downtime after they hit their targets. You see, they see every single day. The rewards that they achieved and they're reminded of that big win that they have and they're stronger because of it because we chose the right kind of rewards. What kind of cool rewards have you given out? Think about this for a second. Or, or what kind of rewards have you gotten? Um, just do me a favor. If you have a great way to reward your team or ways that you would like to be rewarded that don't take time away from work, but rather they add to your growth, then tell me in the comment section below. I mean, I really wanna know what kind of things do you like to be rewarded with? What kind of things have you rewarded your team with that have really worked well, that didn't take away from your company, didn't take away from their time working, but it actually added to your growth? Because listen, we all want a company that's built to grow. I've been blessed several times over with companies that grew larger and larger and larger in the first few years that most companies grow in a lifetime. But no one had to do that, didn't come overnight. It didn't come by accident. And it came with a whole lot of trial and error. It came because I'm in the trenches myself every single day, growing my companies and pushing through obstacles. And at every single growth spurt, I systematize what works so we never have to learn those lessons again. And so I can reproduce that growth in each of my other companies too. And that's why I love each week sharing with you subtle ways, these little subtle ways that usually take less time than you're spending right now that you can grow more predictably and more consistently and with less frustration today because your business, your company, your organization is actually built to grow. Now, as you grow, as you grow your business, things break like systems. I mean, heck, the systems that got you to a million dollars cannot get you to $10 million. That just makes sense, right? The ones that get you to $10 million can't get you to $30 million. But most entrepreneurs and most CEOs don't recognize when things are breaking and it's two to three years down the road before they see that something is broken and slowing their momentum down. If you're having trouble scaling past the million dollar mark or the 10 or the 100 million dollar mark, go take the Built to Grow review. It's totally free and it helps leaders just like you to see what parts of their business might be breaking before it actually hurts their momentum. It's builttogrowreview.com. I'll put a link in the description below, but it's builttogrowreview.com. Pretty simple to remember. It's free and the insight that you get could be what changes the game for you this quarter or maybe this entire year. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, do it now because we're going to be giving away a $5,000 business strategy with me. Companies pay six figures to be in my advisory program. So even just one meeting could flip that switch and change the game for you and your company almost overnight. Subscribe now and take the Built to Grow review. And then tell me in the chat section below, in the comment section, tell me the best rewards that you've used in your company or that you enjoy getting. I'll see you next time. No matter what stage of growth you're at, we all need an unbiased review of what's working and also what might not be working anymore in our business. Because the greatest cause of stagnation in any company, the reason most companies hit plateaus in their growth is because they fail to see the roadblocks that stop momentum in its tracks.